This is the extraordinary thing about being in the Mara, especially as somebody who really can't get enough of elephants, is every now and again you find yourself surrounded by them in these extraordinary large herds. And that happens in the Sabi Sands as well. But out here, that sense of space is just that much more magnified. They're not disappearing anytime soon. And I can't help but wonder if this is the herd with the little one in it. We saw it being born, when was it? Was it two days ago, three days ago? Two days ago. I honestly, days are blurring slowly but surely into one. But we saw a little elephant take its first steps and I've been looking for it ever since. But an elephant that size, if you're an adult female, you stick out above the grass, but for a tiny baby elephant, we might not even see its back. Oh, there's a baby. Is there a baby? Oh, there's a baby. Hey, what, what's happening? Are you stuck in a swamp? Come on, <laughs> off you go. Up you get. Uh, Tucker, age four, while we watch our elephant climb up the bank, you want to know if we have trees with woolly worms. Uh, Tucker, we do actually. We absolutely do. I know exactly what you're talking about. You're talking about the caterpillar bush. And oh, this is so sweet. Look at it saying well done for climbing up. Tucker, we do. We do have caterpillar bushes here or the woolly worm bushes. I haven't seen that many of them. We also have something different here called a woolly caper bush. And that's the one that Brent keeps getting confused. He can't remember the difference between a woolly caper bush and a caterpillar bush. If I find one, Tucker, I'll show you what a woolly caper bush looks like. And then you can add it to your collection. I have to share the story with you because I heard it a few days ago and I haven't really had the opportunity to tell you it yet. And it's such a great one. When I first arrived here, we'd been driving for five, six hours. I'm not quite sure how long the drive is, about six hours. And I got, I arrived in the evening and we went, Brent and myself went straight into a rangers meeting to meet with some of the safari guides that work at Ngama. Fantastic group of people. I'm really looking forward to working with them. And we were talking, they have a special show and tell session. And trust me, this is connected to the elephants you're watching, I promise. They had, a, they had a special show and tell session and it involved each of the guides doing a bit of research on a topic, which I think is a, a wonderful idea. Stuff that they don't necessarily know. And it was on a millipede. And just wait for it, promise you there's a connection. So apparently the local Maasai name, don't ask me to remember what it is because I was barely even human at that point, let alone capable of remembering anything except the story. The Maasai word directly translated, or the name for a millipede, basically means he who leads the cattle to water. And apparently, look, they might have been having me on. I had just arrived after all, and there's a certain spirit amongst guides to do something like this. But apparently the story goes that all of the animals were really very thirsty and it was a time of great drought and there was only one water hole and the elephants were hogging it as we have seen elephants do in the past. They do often chase other animals away from water holes and the animals got thirstier and thirstier until eventually they convened a meeting and the millipede volunteered its services and of course the animals all laughed and said what can you do to help us and the millipede said just wait. And the millipede crawled up to the water hole and got its friends to crawl up to the water hole. And they all crawled up the trunks of the elephants and gave them such a tickle that the elephants ran away from the water and the animals could all go and drink. So there you go. I will try and find out what the local Maasai name is. I have completely forgotten. It was a long day. But that story stuck out in my mind as something quite special. Millipedes to the rescue. Roshni, you say, wow, this grass looks so much greener. It is in this particular section. This is a very boggy, swampy section of this reserve. So it's the sort of area where you look at that and you think, oh, that looks perfect to drive on until you sink up to your axle. ...in mud and realize that maybe it wasn't such a good idea. So it's a different species of grass. I don't know which species of grass it is. I'm still coming to grips with all of the different types of plants here. Most of them are familiar, but that is basically a swamp that the elephants are standing in, which is why that little baby was struggling to get up and why the sort of the elephants, apart from the fact that they're behind a slight hill, 
are sinking down into the mud. I can't remember what it's called, though, this section. I have absolutely no idea. See? Females with long tusks. Lots and lots of them. Now, the grasses of the Masai Mara are, of course, looking very green and healthy thanks to the late rains. I think it's safe to say that it's not quite the same on Juma.